Well, 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 giving honor to whom honor is due. It's my honor and privilege to bring to the microphone God's general, God's oracle, God's prophet. Receive and welcome Apostle Joshua Selman. Let's celebrate him. Celebrate him as he comes. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Hallelujah. Good morning to everyone. The shouts of joy and victory will never depart from your tent. Someone is receiving it by faith. The Lord prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. In the name of Jesus. As for you, you will keep going from glory to glory. The Lord will use your life to demonstrate his faithfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ, your life will be verses for people to read and learn God. They will look at your life and know that it is true that God is above all. In the mighty name of Jesus. Can we lift our hands in one minute and ask the Lord to speak to us this morning? The entrance of his word gives light, the Bible says, and understanding unto the simple. Someone is praying. Pray with faith, pray believing. Scripture says, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. Father, we give you praise. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Speak to us this morning, O God. Reveal your ways, and let Jesus be glorified. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, while standing, help me honor God's servant, Apostle Achidume and his dear wife. Thank you, sir. Thank you sincerely. Thank you for the love and the warmth. Please, just allow me honor the dear man of God, um, Dr. Dele Oshimakende. Thank you. Such an honor. Good to see you, sir. Doctor looks good on you, by the way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Please be seated. Amen. 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 I made a statement while speaking with my people, and I'd like to start um, on that note, that revelations create transitions. That means revelation has the unique ability to move you from where you are to the next level in the spirit. The moment revelation comes, it stops you from remaining at the same level. So revelation is like a vehicle. It pushes men into the manifestation of prophecy. When God wants to move you forward, he brings his light. And when that light comes, it sustains the ability to cause you to arise and then to shine. Hallelujah. We considered a few things discussing the person of Jesus yesterday and I told us that my session was an attempt to answer three questions. Number one, to answer the question who Jesus was and is. Number two, to understand his mission and assignment. And then number three, to examine from the lens of scripture whether or not that mission was successful. And if so, what proof do we have today that Jesus actually succeeded in his mission? A quick recap, um, we said how that the Bible, the best description of Jesus that was captured in scripture, uh, in my opinion, came from the discourse of John. John chapter 1, he took out time to begin the discussion of Jesus, not from a historic standpoint, not from an archaeological standpoint, he traced it right to his divinity, calling him the word. And the first 12 verses of John chapter 1 does justice to a very thorough description of Jesus from his divine standpoint. And then we took our time to examine that the clearest description of Jesus was to examine what he said about himself. Hallelujah. One time he probed the disciples in Matthew's account. He said, who do men say that I the son of man am? And all kinds of opinions came. Some said you are this. Some said you are that. Some said you are this. Many people called Jesus many things in scripture. They called him one of the prophets. They called him an incarnate of one of the prophets. They called him Beelzebub. They called him every other thing in between. But his trust is noteworthy to examine the things that he said 
about himself. And we looked from the Gospels down to Revelation. Ten of them, a quick recap. One, he called himself the bread of life. He called himself the light of the world. He called himself the good shepherd. He called himself the resurrection and the life. He called himself the way and the truth and the life. He called himself the true vine. He called himself the alpha, omega, beginning and the end. He called himself he that lived, was dead and now is alive forevermore. Ten profound descriptions that Jesus gave about himself. But more importantly, we examine his mission. And just a quick recap, it's important so that we can connect to our discussion this morning. It's going to be a very brief time. Just share a few things and then we'll pray. That according to scripture, Jesus had a threefold mission, three principal assignments. And if you do not understand this assignment, it will affect your efficiency as a believer. Because your assignment is to be an extension of that mission. Number one, that Jesus came primarily as an accurate revelation and manifestation of the misunderstood God. It's important we understand this. That until Jesus manifested, until Jesus came, it was impossible for men to have an accurate understanding of God. God remained a mystery for many many years and the interpretation of god that the nation of israel had was purely through the lens of priests and prophets they had to make do with the descriptions that the prophets gave them whatever they told them that god was they believed it but now from the lens of jesus we see that we have the credence to correct their perceptions about god because the bible tells us that we see in part paul speaking and we prophesy in part many of the things the prophets credited to God from the lens of the person of Jesus Jesus coming as a marking script we know that many of them did not see correctly the Bible did not have the transitions of men in Revelation even Apostle Paul himself he grew in knowledge we can grow in grace and that comes by increase in knowledge are we together so that Jesus came to correct our understanding about the misunderstood God everything the Bible tells us God is or God does we have a right to reject it until we confirm it through the life and ministry of Jesus if he says I have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness I have drawn you how are we sure that God is love we have to examine that through the life and the ministry of Jesus what he did did he do when he came around children what did he do when he came around the sick what did he do when he came around all kinds of people? So when the Bible makes statements like a lying spirit came from God, we use Jesus to verify the authenticity of that statement. Is that statement consistent with the character and the person of God? The Bible already answered us in John chapter 1. We examined that yesterday, that this God incarnate came full of grace and truth. Are we together? So, he came as an accurate revelation of the misunderstood God. Number two, the second mission of Jesus was that he came to make the life of God that we call Zoe, the life of God accessible to man by reconciling man to God. The second assignment of Jesus was to insist and ensure that all men have a chance to receive the life of God. And by the way, it's important for you to understand that the life that we now have in Christ is not the same life that Adam had even before the fall. There are very striking differences between the kind of life that Adam enjoyed even before the fall. The Bible calls him a living soul and it calls us in light of what Christ has done, quickening spirits. We are not just alive, but we have the power to transmute that life to everything. It's the reason why the healing ministry can function. You can literally be a channel. You see, something can flow from you to men. You are not just alive. You have become a life-giving spirit. And the Bible lets us know that the only way men access that life 
is by believing in the son and it is not everything you believe about jesus that gives you eternal life i hope you know that believing he's a prophet is right but that is not the condition for the administration of eternal life there is an exact body of knowledge you must believe that translates to eternal life demons believe certain correct information about jesus unbelievers believe certain correct information about jesus believing that he's a founder of the christian faith from a sociological standpoint or maybe religious standpoint you are right but that does not get you saved you have to believe an exact information and that is captured in romans chapter 10 from verse 9 and 10 the bible says that with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation you have to believe him as savior as lord and as christ this is the jurisdiction of the body of knowledge that administers eternal life believing him as a healer brings you healing but not eternal life everybody jesus healed died everybody jesus casted demons from still died it is the one miracle jesus could not perform himself not before the cross all believers can perform that miracle today of midwifing men into the experience of the life of god is the reason why he said greater works than this it becomes greater because jesus could not give anybody eternal life not before dying his death was part of the process that made eternal life available to all men now in christ by communicating the gospel you can literally be a conduit a channel for people to be translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son if you're following say amen. amen this is his second assignment so that when you say you love god and you are serving god you know exactly what you are doing number three what was the third and final assignment of jesus i told us yesterday that he came as a model of god's expectation for man it would be very evil and unfair of god to have expectations for man without creating a pattern and a model jesus came as a model god's description of what the believer should become at the point of your yieldedness and transformation this is god's idea for what you should become are we together he said as my father has sent me the reason why it's important to understand jesus as a portrait and a pattern is so that as you engage the word as you engage the ministry of the holy spirit and as you engage the ministry of the teaching priest you keep verifying what you are becoming against that reference when you find yourself becoming something outside of the portrait of the christ you have a right to stop to vet and to judge the various things building you are we together now yes so if i claim i am studying the word if i claim i am praying if i claim i am receiving from the ministry of the teaching priest and i find out that my evolving my becoming is not becoming like christ then it means i'm using another mirror another lens are we together very important jesus came as a description of what you and i will become when we yield ourselves to the ministry of the word we yield ourselves to the ministry of the spirit and we yield ourselves to the ministry of the teaching priest now i just want to answer the last question and then we'll pray did he succeed and if yes what is the proof did he really succeed in this assignment did he succeed in correcting our understanding about the misunderstood God did he succeed in creating the new and living way for us to now access the life of God all men John 3 16 says that blessing is for whosoever not to some whosoever and has he created that portrait for us are we convinced that we can be like him in experience two scriptures Colossians chapter 2 13 to 15 jesus succeeded in his mission absolutely when he shouted on the cross and said it is finished he meant it the bible says and you being dead to your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh 
hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses paul is speaking now 14 blotting out the handwriting of ordinances which was against us which was contrary to us he took it out of the way how nailing it to his cross 15 he says and having spoiled principalities i like paul paul is taking time to give you the details of what jesus did so that you are not in confusion he did not just blot out the handwritings he also spoiled principalities it's a language of victory and powers and the bible says he did it in public so that there's no confusion he made an open show of them triumphing over them in it someone say amen, amen. hallelujah the reason why he gives you this information is because all unclean spirits are stubborn spirits all all demonic spirits are stubborn spirits in light of all that christ has done they will still wage war fighting your understanding your victory now is not just predicated on what christ has done but you're coming into a thorough comprehension that there is a consciousness you must come into to walk in the experience of that victory ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7 please ephesians 1 and 7 the Bible says, in whom we have redemption. What do we have? One more time. What do we have? The word redeem means to buy back by paying a price, a ransom. Like a terrorist who kidnaps someone and they will put a price and say 10 million naira. When you do bring the 10 million naira, you have redeemed that person. To redeem means to buy back. Are we together now? And you know the value of what you redeem by the value of the price that was paid no other price was worthy enough to redeem man except the blood of the son of god himself not the blood of some spirit not the blood of another man not the blood of bulls and all of that and like you may have heard me say in ancient times it, the requirement for the sacrifice was that the lamb had to be one years old you know why because the age of the lamb would determine the validity of the atonement so in this case now the lamb who was ageless was the one who poured his blood on the heavenly tabernacle if you want to know how long your the atonement has happened you find out the age of the lamb who died are we together now the age of the lamb who died not the age of the man who he became not 33 and a half years old i'm talking about the ancient of days Are we together yes so when he calls himself alpha and omega you see the bible starts by saying in the beginning not from the beginning from the beginning means there is a starting point that your mind can relate with when he says in the beginning it means that somewhere we just have to create a starting point but that as far as man is concerned you cannot the the only one who can die is the one who was born is a law you cannot die if you were not born there must be a starting point you see jesus was born in the flesh so he could die in the flesh but you see he's the ageless lamb this is very powerful so that your atonement is eternal based on the age of the lamb that died do you believe that this is powerful so jesus succeeded in that mission succeeded in defeating sin the nature of sin producing the outworkings of unrighteousness he succeeded in defeating satan himself now there's no time talking about this but um it's important for you to know that satan is not the only unclean spirit that rebelled that is a discussion for another time there are other spirits today that are bound currently in everlasting chains. Those ones were not even allowed on the earth for the sake of the elect. Are we together? And when Satan fell, according to scripture, he did not fall alone. He came with one third of the angels. 
there are all kinds of unclean spirits it's a general name they are called any spirit that is not the holy spirit or a holy spirit is an unclean spirit your spirit in christ is a holy spirit you agree on that yes because you have received the holiness of god you are a holy spirit the bible calls out a holy nation in fact a peculiar people but the most holy spirit or the holy spirit as we know the very spirit that proceeds from the father he's the one who even sponsors that entire process i'm saying this so that there is a kind of orientation if you do not have you will not walk in victory it's important for you to know that jesus did not fail in his mission he succeeded now watch this every attack on your life coming as sickness poverty failure is satan attempting to wrestle the finished work of christ are we together now when satan plagues men there is a goal behind the things that he does when he tries to steal to kill and to destroy like the bible says he's not just doing it for doing sake there is there is a reorientation that satan wants to give the believer to call god unfaithful in light of your pain are we together now so when he plagues you when your life does not capture any semblance of victory you now read here that you are victorious in christ you have been raised up with him you have been seated with christ are we together now but you look at your life and your, your life is far from that experience and satan being the master of the sense realm he knows how to manipulate your understanding into agreeing with him that god may be lying somewhere so the bible says let this mind be in you not just let this nature there are two things you need the nature but you need the mindset the consciousness and the understanding if you have the nature without the mind of christ it will be a spiritual reality that you are saved but the experience of the zoe life will never be captured in you are we together now so what most believers need is not the nature it's a fact based on the integrity of god's word it is not an issue of feeling whoever believes that jesus died and resurrected by the glory of the father the bible tells us that at that point even in your sickness even in your defeat even in your poverty it becomes a spiritual reality incontestable let god be true and all men liars but walking in the experience of the zoe life and you have to listen to this it does not just depend on having the life of christ it depends on having the mind of christ so the defeat of many believers that consistently insults the reality of the finished work is not because jesus christ did not defeat sin satan hell and the grave there is a requisite level of transformation that brings men into the experience of the spirit life the experience of the kingdom life ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 is someone understanding now why do we find our lives far short of everything that was purchased for us in redemption here is the answer read with me please 4 18 ephesians ready one to read having the understanding darkened uh-huh being alienated from the life of god please stop 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 let's not rush that scripture being what alienated what does it mean to be alienated taken out of the experience of a thing and the bible says it happens through the ignorance that is in them that the ignorance that is in a believer paul was talking to believers not unbelievers paul was talking to the believers in ephesus that even though you are saved genuinely so you have received jesus you have received the indestructible life of god you can be alienated from the experience the riches that come with that life through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart the primary assignment of the prince of this world is to blind the minds of people listen paul was speaking to the church in corinth and he said i fear lest satan that satan should not beguile you the way he beguiled eve how did he beguile eve 
by first finding out what God said because Satan's raw material is what God said it's not only you that needs what God said the attack that Satan's fashions around your life also depends on what God told you so Satan also has to wait and know what God has said to fashion weapons against you so he comes to Eve and says my first question is what did God say if I have not found out what God has said I can't do anything to you and he heard what Eve said we are free to eat of this tree and of the tree that is at the center of the garden the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we should not touch now watch what he said don't you think God is trying to hide something from you is that all is it that simple and the Bible said he beguiled Eve Adam was not deceived he fell because of love the same way Jesus was not deceived he came to the earth and became a man because of love being the second and the last Adam are we together now an attack on Eve was an attack on the authority given to Adam an attack on the church is not for the church he wants to discredit something about the finished work of Christ the church being his bride are we learning now this is very important for us to understand so the Bible says, Paul speaking, I fear lest Satan come in with subtlety, he says. This is the very foundation of the subject called witchcraft. Witchcraft does not just mean to enchant. In its essence, it means to cause a person to err using the tool of deception. So the moment I bring you into believing a lie, what is a lie? A lie is beyond an untrue statement. A lie is anything God did not say. Are we together? A lie is anything God did not say. So it is true that in Christ, the potential for victory the potential for, for excellence, the potential for a prosperous life, the potential for influence. I like John 10, 10. Are we learning this morning? It says the thief, the thief cometh not. That means you, you never see him around until he finds something worth stealing, worth killing, worth destroying. I think I said it some years ago in this church that satan coming to your life is a verification system that god has deposited something in your life that is worth stealing worth killing and worth destroying because the bible says the thief is too busy he will not isolate you out of your 12 relatives and keep attacking you he has seen something unique within you that you are not even aware that you have but he says i am come this is my manifesto that ye may have life and that you have that life in its fullest or have that life more abundantly what is abundant life receiving the life of god together with all the benefits listen 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 you need to understand the difference between life and abundant life Jesus did not just come to give us life. He came to give us abundant life. Abundant life is that initial um, translation from the kingdom of darkness into that of his dear son. But together with all the benefits, and you want to know those benefits? Psalms 103 lists at least six of them first. Bless the Lord, O my soul, he says, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul and forget not his benefit benefit number one who forgiveth all thine iniquities benefit number two who heals you media are we working together who healed how many all your diseases that means you can be saved and still live in sickness you have life but not abundant life abundant life means life together with the benefits demonstrate the total victory of Jesus being captured in your life who he let all thy diseases number three it says who redeem it number four now redeem it thy life from destruction deliverance in its entirety and then who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies honor are we together now I like this one I receive it for myself who satisfied thy mouth with how many things 
he didn't say with things with good things because if your youth is to be renewed like an ego you need good things it takes more than just claiming and wishing when you eat well you will look well believe it or not i'm, I'm doing this man it's an honest opinion are we are we together there is a relationship between peace of mind eating well living a decent life and longevity there is a way you can suffer and die not by demons the natural cause of being of degenerating under an unhealthy living condition jesus said there are benefits someone say benefits so that when you receive that life you must be aware give me an ins look at this please lend me your attention for one minute when you come for an occasion usually in africa they, there's something called item seven you know what that means huh refreshment now did you come for that occasion for the purpose of eating didn't you have food in your house but it was part of the package it's called benefits there are souvenirs when you come for a wedding or an anniversary are we together when you are leaving you don't have to tell people i came you carry your souvenir so there are seven when you receive the life of god there are things you should carry along and they ask you where did you get this from and you tell them you can't find this in the marketplace on earth you only find this with the savior and the bible says forget not it's a sin if you forget forget not are we learning this morning it's not enough to know that jesus defeated sin satan hell and the grave it's not enough to know that he was dead he was buried he resurrected by the glory of the father it's not even enough to know that today in christ by declaring his lordship you can receive his life the goal is not just for you to receive it the goal is that your life becomes an experience of it eventually the rich of eternal life should flow like a stream through you that when men look at the nature and the kind of your life they influence the grace the favor the power the character everything that reveals Christ the Bible says let your light so shine before men Matthew 5 16 that they may see your good works and glorify your father that's the word God wants to be glorified through your life please say that after me God wants to be glorified through my life one more time God wants to be glorified through my life listen to me if everyone here at Victory Life Bible Church rises to become a living portrait a manifestation of the Zoe life in all its experience and holistically so there is a level of glory that God will get from this church from this city from this territory the refusal to manifest in its fullness robs God of an opportunity to be glorified in the world of men. So he plants that glory within us. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. He says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not compared to be, is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. In us. In us. In us. In us. I reckon there is a dimension of God's glory he desires to be revealed in us when Jesus was transfigured he showed what we can become when we are changed that is the portrait a standard for every believer to press into are we together show me a believer who is born again full of character full of wisdom full of power full of prosperity full of favor full of influence with purpose and grace i show you a portrait of one that can bring glory to god god cannot be glorified in the midst of a weak defeated people did you get that the beauty of any coach even in sports is that you train a team put them together and they win effortlessly the beauty of any university or any institution is that you produce minds today many colleges and institutions around the world they pride and they boast of their standards even if it has declined you cannot argue because the products that have come out from those people are leading the field across the globe so they can beat their chest and say we produce 23 presidents and whether or not their standard is still there you can't argue because they have the proof don't just say Jesus died. What is the proof? 
don't just say he resurrected what is the proof i will show you the proof as we wrap up acts 4 33. Hmm. all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted hallelujah and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus profound statement with great power with great power the apostles did not just come to validate that the mission of jesus was successful they were engraced to prove it god would not want the nations to know him god would not want the nations to love him god would not want the nations to serve him three things you must do with god to know him to love him and to serve him he would not want the nations to know him to love him and to serve him unless and except he grants us the means to validate that he's truly alive this is where the ministry of the holy spirit comes in this is where the ministry of power comes in now look at me please the moment your pursuit as far as transformation as far as becoming if it is connected to the revelation of jesus nothing you desire becomes a danger to you again did you hear what i said your pursuit only becomes dangerous to you if it is simply an ambition the moment you connect any desire to the revelation of jesus it becomes a profitable desire why do you want the one billion naira i want the one billion naira because i need to prove to people in my village i'm not a failure too small a reason no you are not talking kingdom there the one billion naira is because i know that it can build many churches fund mission activities and grant access to the purposes of god to find expression that pursuit stops being carnal immediately because you have connected it to the revelation of jesus everything about the believer's pursuit does not have any value in itself the value in any christian's pursuit is derived from the ability of that pursuit to partner with the revelation of jesus did you get what i just said so many believers this again is the secret to answered prayers when you ask god things blindly just to fulfill your lust the bible says ye ask and ye have not and there is a reason because you just want to fund your lust many believers do not know that the entire believer's life is about the revelation of jesus why do you want a child why do you want to get married why do you want increase why do you want promotion why do you want more members if you cannot answer that question and you cannot connect purpose to the revelation of jesus even good things will hurt you and destroy you it is the reason why people clamor they make money they clamor they have anointing they clamor they get increase and at the end there is no fulfillment because it was never connected to the revelation of jesus god designed man to never have fulfillment until he's connected to the project called kingdom come did you get what i just said so when you go to pray and say father you must give me anointing and God says why and you say I'm tired of being powerless what does that mean you have not spoken God's language you have not connected your desire the Bible says and this is the confidence I wish you Bible students that if we ask anything according to his will not anything we want anything according to his will that he heareth us all I want listen it's for you 
for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted this is one of the major reasons why god hates pride because pride is an attempt to shift jesus as the focus of every pursuit and to put yourself there it is a big secret i have learned in my little walk with god that when your life becomes about the revelation of jesus god will defend his name in your life god will defend his purposes he will shift systems and structures to see that you keep going forward it is the reason why many people do all they can but they don't go forward the profit factor from your life as far as the kingdom is concerned is not there when he gave unto one five talent two talent and one he returned back to see what they had done with it when he find you would think because two of them brought profit he will forgive the one who did not bring profit he still told that person you are a wicked and an unprofitable servant in spite of the fact that the five brought five more the two brought two more he still was dissatisfied because of the carelessness of the one person and he collected that one talent and gave the one who now had ten hallelujah this same Jesus the one you know he's not just returning the same way he has left but he desires you to be like him so that you become an expression of Jesus you become an expression of him everywhere revealing his wisdom revealing his power I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorified breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe lord Lord, breathe, breathe upon my life. Very powerful song. I receive your wisdom. I receive your power. Let it be at work in my life and from my life through me to the intents that the nations will see Jesus, not the vessel. John said that I may decrease, not vanish, but decrease. Are we together many of us God is speaking to you saying I want your life to be more exceptional than you even want it to be but you have the epicenter of your destiny there is nothing pro Jesus there is nothing about the revelation of Jesus I want power so that people will respect me I want money so that people will not mock me let me tell you those reasons may be sincere but when you gauge that against the standard of the kingdom men are not blessed and lifted and rewarded and honored just for the fun of it when your life becomes about revealing Jesus to the nations you don't have to be a preacher but you see the assignment of transformation is to turn believers to witnesses for as long as you still remain a believer there is only so much that can happen you need that transition from a believer to a witness it is until you become a witness a validator of God's claim a promoter and a defender of his interest that is when you will see prosperity like you have never seen that is when you will see increase and influence like you have never seen there is no miracle or magic about God raising people and lifting people and promoting people but there is a, a non-emotional spiritual system of vetting your motive 
until God finds his purposes if that becomes the epicenter of your motive I tell you you can be in a bell kuta here God will raise a destiny helper from America and drag them to you even if you're in the village it is true men who never find help are men who don't love God they are not willing to serve him they just say it mechanically but God is not a fool he will subject you through a rigorous period of vetting that one i assure you it will not come to you as a gift he will test you one day he will say do you love me enough yes empty your account and you say i bind that spirit he says this is only a test all you have in your account cannot even fund your life it's not your money i'm looking for when he told abraham take thine only son it was not something abraham could pray away there are things you can't pray away it is how men rise in the kingdom the price for life is death if you cannot die to yourself and to your ambition you have wasted the presence and the benefit of having jesus can i tell you there are two kinds of cross that you need to carry one has been carried to you by grace but the other one you need to carry it by yourself your own cross find somewhere to pray I promised us we're going to pray this morning sir I've studied a bit about the lifting and how God lifts and prospers people mysteriously so you say it is not true there is a business that only you and God can do in the secret place this one cannot be manipulated you can fake many other things but not that one it is God that supervises that process himself it's not like he commissions another person who can manipulate the result and say this person passed you know we have all kinds of systems we promote people who should not be promoted this one is god that supervises it himself lovest thou me more than this when you say yes he says let's see he doesn't hear yes sir he will test his love against your greatest desires i assure you be careful when you say lord i love you more than anything he loves that kind of prayer he would test it against that prayer I assure you he will test it against everything you only find him when you don't have anything else to hold ask Jacob for as long as Jacob still had many things he could not encounter the God of the Bible he came to him in Genesis 28 and when Jacob did not encounter God the next that will happen was about 20 years of suffering in the house of Laban when Jacob was now frustrated in chapter 32 of Genesis, the Bible says he dismissed his wives, he dismissed his cattle when he was alone. That man came again and said, let me try you this time. And Jacob said, I wasted that opportunity, not again. He held him and he said, I will not, he said, leave me for the day break it. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I hope you know the man saying, unless you bless me, had cattle. He had things that he threw away. He was not talking of giving me money. Something more superior. Now, let me wrap up by showing you how God blesses. It's a very interesting thing. Many of us want to be blessed by God, but we don't even know what we're asking for. Look at how God blesses a man called Jacob. Number one, what is your name? And he says, I'm Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. He said, I shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and you have prevailed. The Bible says he touched the whole of his tie. Do you know what that means? How does God bless a man by destabilizing his balance? That forever you will never be complete without the assistance of God again. And he calls it a blessing. God does something to your life that you can never ignore God and go forward again. You will be ever needing him. And yet he calls it a blessing. Hmm. and he called the name of the place Peniel and the sun arose the face of God for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved and Jacob has now become for us today a portrait of genuine encounters with God he said who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place he that hath clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul on to vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation then he says this is the generation that seeks thy face O Jacob We're about to pray listen to me the whole subject of Jesus will only become a theological topic that encourages you and you may never see that life flow through you except watch this and unless you make up your mind that I will not only receive it as a reality that I'm saved, 
I will begin a project right now a project of transformation by revelation transiting myself from a believer to become a witness so that my life becomes an oasis a river flowing out the possibilities of the kingdom to the nations that in and through my life Jesus will be revealed when this becomes your project you will not be afraid of praying and speaking over prosperity you will not be afraid of crying for the healing anointing you will not be afraid of saying Lord multiply my influence like Jabez bless me enlarge my coast it no longer becomes a carnal desire because the end of that pursuit is the revelation of Jesus again I refer you to a statement that God told me years ago he said if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you it is true if you will let men see me when God told me this thing I almost had nothing when if you will let men see me see me through your rising see me through the excellence that emanates from your life see me through the manifestation of God's power you see the temptation that befalls all men is because like I said yesterday the average African comes from a wounded background so there is already a project to prove a point by default that is what motivates your going to school that is what motivates your getting money that is what motivates your desire for promotion and in itself is not wrong except that it can hurt that kingdom come project later on because you get to a point where your whole life is about proving points I am successful can you see it and if anybody dare says no, you'll say, I will repeat it again. I will shout it on your face. Now, when your entire life becomes about revealing Jesus, and I say this very sincerely, I've seen a bit of what God can do with a man when your heart is ever ready. My prayer every time I pray is that, Lord, when men look at me, if I'm a true mirror, they should not see me. I said it yesterday if you look at a mirror and you see another thing that mirror is an object of divination it's no longer a mirror because if you look at the mirror it should reflect the object is that true when people look at your life they should think about Jesus beyond you they may start by considering you wow look at victory life Bible Church great church with great people but at the end something about the excellence that flows from it would draw them back to Jesus and they say so this is what God can do with a man I'm praying for someone your life will make someone's prayer life come back to life your life the excellence the overflow of the life of Jesus through you will make someone who has hitherto been on serious with God to get back on track with him you will make loving God marketable you will make serving God marketable. You will make living for Jesus marketable. That if someone wants to say you serve God and fail, God brings your image as the defense. He said, no, this man, he served God and God has lifted him. This is the correct portrait of what I can do. Are we learning? Yes. Don't waste your experience with Jesus. Just being happy that I am saved with nothing to show forth in your life and now there are many people who do not know that the average believer has a mandate and that that mandate is not only to receive the life of God receiving the life of God is only one half of it the other one is to allow that life flow flow to the nations flow to people if I lay hands on a sick body today someone who's been diagnosed of cancer say and the person gets healed what have i done i've not just sold myself as an anointed man of god that is the very latter part of it what i have done is that i've demonstrated the victory of jesus in experience for every healing every manifestation of prosperity every advancement and success is beyond just showing that men are doing well it is a message to creation you are speaking defending the interests of the kingdom that he still died and rose again it is true when a sinner like the many who were born again yesterday when they come to Jesus it does not just show that the man of God is anointed there is a kind of Jesus the nations are looking for I read a book years ago as I wrap up 
by T.L. Osborne the message that works there is a message that does not work there is a gospel that does not work there is an another kind of Jesus that is being sold to the nations is the reason why they are rejecting him we have sold a powerless Jesus we have sold a Jesus that erodes creativity and erodes intelligence and removes our brain and freezes it we've sold a Jesus who is anti-influence we've sold a Jesus who is anti-well-being of people we've sold a Jesus who makes a man a responsible father as an unbeliever and an irresponsible one when he gets saved and the nation said this portrait of Jesus I do not want but God is looking for a people who will represent Jesus present him again correcting the anomalies that have come from that that you can show people that people don't come to Jesus and go down did you hear what I said people don't come to Jesus and fail in life people don't come to Jesus we love him beyond the benefits but the benefits help to shout his name and to shout his praise oh Lord our God he says how excellent can I tell you you are a better Christian being prosperous than not having anything I assure you because in your prosperity you can bless people you can package Jesus through love and serve the nations you are a better Christian when you are healed and healthy agile enough to serve him than a sick defeated one you are a better Christian in a position of influence where you can defend his purposes using an elite platform I'm saying this so that in receiving Jesus you must understand the implication of what you are receiving when you say I receive Jesus you also mean I receive anything and everything under God that can make me promote his name you don't receive Jesus and reject prosperity something is wrong with your understanding you don't receive Jesus and reject healing something is wrong with that understanding you don't receive Jesus and reject longevity something is wrong with that understanding everything we receive that comes with Jesus are the defense systems that help us to make the nations know that he's worth receiving we've had the honor of doing so many things for the kingdom and even among the prisons and so many things wonderful things that we're doing for the kingdom and let me tell you the truth ladies and gentlemen if you forget everything that I've said here, do not forget that everything we pray for, everything we seek sincerely, is not for the benefit of that thing in itself. It is because it comes as a tool. This is the correct understanding of prosperity, correct understanding of the anointing, correct understanding of ministry, correct understanding of growth. I desire this for the sake of your house. I desire this for the sake of your name. When I got to that point, God began to help me in life, began to help me in ministry. There are several men and women of God scattered here and they will tell you that the point of transformation in their lives was when they got out of the way and replaced their pursuit with kingdom come and the revelation of Jesus. The reason why you've been praying and saying, Lord, change my son is because you are more conscious of shame than the son being used to bring glory to God father you have to change this son I'm tired of being in shame and God says no shame is too small a reason to bring the resources of heaven and invest on that boy but the moment you say father my desire beyond my reputation is that through my life I can have the honor of giving you a vessel another body prepared for you you will be sleeping when God will wake somebody to intercede for one year for that child. One day you will hear that that child who was a drunkard has now become a pastor. You won't believe till you fall under the anointing in your own child's ministry. That's when you will know God really found him. Listen, let me tell you. The easiest way to live the Christian life is to focus on revealing Jesus. The easiest way to live the Christian life is to focus on revealing Jesus. I'm going to ask us to rise as we pray. Please rise. My one desire is that you be praised, that you be praised, that you be praised. 
my one desire that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised can i give us two prayer points number one i like you to pray and cry unto the lord every motivation behind my pursuit and my desires that is not the revelation of jesus let it die here right now please go ahead and pray in one minute every desire every motivation it's true that i desire the healing anointing it's true that i desire prosperity it's true that i desire lifting it's true that i desire advancement i'm hoping to get admission somewhere i'm hoping to relocate abroad purify my desire someone pray purify my passion why do you want fame why do you want liftings why do you want a name online and on site please pray why do you want greater wealth and abundance you are a man in ministry here trusting god for unction for a strong apostolic ministry a strong prophetic ministry go ahead and pray hallelujah let this be your prayer point all through the remaining part of this conference let me tell you the truth many people do not truly love god they think they do but i tell you by the authority of scripture they do not they just want to use him because they've been wounded by life and they want to show that they are successful there's pressure coming from family coming from society will you not rise will you not be great i want to be a millionaire i want to be a billionaire i want to be this there's nothing wrong with those desires except that if the end of it is the marketing of self you will never secure the attention of heaven i tell you this by the authority of scripture you want to secure the attention of heaven let your sincere desire for the anointing be beyond yourself and beyond your ministry lord i see many people who are sick wounded and broken by satan i see many people going back to the devil and going to herbalists and lord i pray that you can trust these hands of mine frail as they are may your glory rest upon them that they become the extensions of your healing power for the nation for your glory that is the kind of prayer you will go to bed and wake up with an unction you cannot account for god will move through you in a mighty way that you cannot explain lord i see confusion scattered around your body would you grant me the spirit of revelation that i can bring clarity and understanding of doctrine and scripture i desire this because i do not want an army you are raising to be deceived that sincere desire will grant you access to the fountain of revelation lord i'm trusting you for millions trusting you for billions the reason is because it is within my heart to sponsor the work of god i i have agreed with you that by next year i want to overwrite i want to write off the entire bill for the next conferences that will happen in victory life bible church i want to tell the man of god just focus on the ministry of the word and prayer god has raised me for your sake and raised me for the work of the kingdom until we find such people we will never be able to reveal jesus to the nations the carnality of our pursuits is why we don't secure the attention of heaven it is not that the pursuits themselves are wrong it is that we have so connected those pursuits to the marketing of self the marketing of flesh hallelujah that when men look at me they should not just see a great man of god that celebrity mindset i educated myself to be delivered from it it's a cancer to kill you in the presence of those who love you are we together 
and let me pray especially for any young person once you are here it's important to guard who mentors and who you learn from don't learn nonsense sincerely there are some of us our entire obsession when we see some of this little honor a man of God is coming you know a little honor that becomes our obsession that's what creates your fasting program so the fasting itself is not wrong but at the back of your mind I need to outshine and prove to my contemporaries I'm not a failure and God says I do not work like that you need to be very careful hallelujah a celebrity mentality will destroy your potential to reveal Jesus I want you to believe me on this now God is not God does God wants to lift us you will be lifted more than you have ever imagined but when your heart is stayed on revealing him not stayed on getting fame every time I have an opportunity to pray I tell the Lord take away from my life anything you will bring to my life that will not allow men see you I'm praying it as a personal request and I'm saying it even as I'm standing on stage here may it never come into my life I rather be a failure having a healthy relationship with God than to become a celebrity that is completely out of God's program it's a foolish bargain it's not a wise one because at the end of this life no dead body goes with one naira to the grave no dead body goes with one certificate to the grave your relationship with Jesus is greater than your quest for fame for power for ministry Billy Graham did not have so much of healings per se as, as it were but he was a man who revealed Jesus to the nation among kings and nobles many people today are products and fruits of his apostleship can I speak over you as we wrap up three prayers in one I want to use the next two three minutes my time is up I want you to lay your hands if you are trusting God for a healing and then lay your hands also if you are trusting God to do something in your life it may not necessarily be sickness a change of heart you are trusting God to do a miracle I want to speak over your life I believe in the power of God we are revealers of his majesty revealers of his glory I'm standing in faith lending my voice with the apostle over this house and every vessel every man and woman of God here represented hallelujah but never forget this the life of God is only made manifest when it is empowered by this battery called the mind of Christ the life of God is like a brand new clock it cannot work till you put the battery inside are we together have you seen a beautiful clock no matter how expensive it is you buy that clock it will not move it will just stay there because there is a battery the battery that powers the manifestation of the life of God is the mind of Christ there is a level of transformation that every believer needs the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of a believer is transformation and that by revelation the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment the engracing that makes you defend the things that you know and the greatest need of an empowered believer is purpose because empowerment without purpose is like a car that is fueled and is running without direction at every point in your life you can know what should be your major pursuit if you are an unbeliever you need beyond the healing you will be healed but the greatest need is salvation if you are a believer what you need is transformation and that is a laborious journey that demands your own cooperation with the Holy Spirit the Word of God and the ministry of the teaching priest if God has helped you to attain unto some measure of transformation you have truths that are accurate but no grace to defend and validate them you need to contend for for empowerment Jesus gave all the disciples the information they needed but he said tarry tarry you need engracing so that when you say God lives you can demonstrate that he lives when you say God heals you can demonstrate that he heals and when you come into the point of empowerment purpose is what takes away the distraction that leads to pride because you know why the anointing came you know why the influence came let's pray now
There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship as we bless your name. As we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory and the honor yes we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one of Jesus I rebuke every infirmity I stand under this corporate anointing in partnership with every grace that is here represented and we agree as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ every infirmity every death sentence manifesting as sicknesses and diseases for you or for your loved ones in the name that is above all names be healed now shout a believing amen be healed now let blood diseases be healed now all kinds of terminal diseases be healed now bone conditions be healed now eye conditions be healed now ear conditions be healed now respiratory conditions be healed now and for someone you may be saying apostle I don't need healing but my life is not going forward in the name of Jesus because your heart is stayed on revealing Jesus I prophesy to you go forward go forward you break forth on the north and on the south and on the east and on the west shout a loud amen for someone here I speak to you you will lay up gold as dust by the mighty hand of God I call for the ministry of destiny help us may they appear in the morning may they appear in the afternoon may they appear in the evening they will come like the magi from the east bringing you gifts in the name of Jesus and I pray that anyone here who has gone or is going through any kind of demonic attack an attack on your life your health your family in the name that is above all names I curse that spirit now when Jesus said it is finished he meant it therefore we stamp that statement over your life in the mighty name of Jesus whatever has fought your walking in the victory that is in Christ I decree and declare that hindrance that obstacle that impedance gives way now let me pray over your spiritual life I love to pray for people over their spiritual life because the battery that powers your entire life is the strength and the health of your spiritual life if your spiritual life is one is found wanting that means the efficiency of your prayer life your word study life are we together your consecration towards God maintaining the grace is giving you your love and passion for the house of God if all these spiritual things are found wanting eventually no matter how blooming and bold something your life looks now it will eventually go down and fade like a leaf therefore I pray for you everyone here who is struggling with their prayer life you love Jesus but it looks like the grace the zest the impetus to pray has gone down in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you Jesus pray that was prayerful all through his life receive the grace to pray 
Jesus was a student of scripture and a student of knowledge received the grace to pant after knowledge Jesus was tempted in every way yet without sin the power to live above the grip of sin and unrighteousness let it be released upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ listen for as long as Jesus walked upon the earth he was indestructible they did not kill him he gave himself to be killed therefore nothing brings you down nothing takes your life before your time Jesus from the time he was born up until he left he never lacked helpers I pray for you whoever must be positioned at every prophetic junction of your life to help you become to help you actualize destiny I push them prophetically to your life in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray that at the end of your life it will be that you spent your entire life revealing Jesus beginning from Abel Kuta here or let your jurisdiction be the ends of the earth in Jesus mighty name we pray Pastor Chidume thank you so very much thank you ma thank you victory life bible church the lord increase you in jesus name celebrate apostle selman celebrate him celebrate him <laughs>